Congratulations on your pregnancy. Have you thought about the pregnancy care options that are available to you? I'm Heather Cruz, a community midwife at the Rotunda Hospital, and I work with a team of passionate, kind and experienced midwives, providing care to the women of North County Dublin for the past 18 years. We provide care to you during your pregnancy within your local community. Our clinics are available at local health centres of Blanchardstown, Balbriggan, Cabra, Cordoff, Coolock, Darndale, Finglas, Swords and the Rotunda Hospital for the women living in or working in the city. You can have your booking visit also in the comfort of your own home if you live within the Dublin 7 or 11 area. Your checkups are shared between your community midwife and your GP and these visits are scheduled with you up until your baby is born. We also provide antenatal education classes, including hypnobirthing and breastfeeding. We're always on hand to offer advice, answer questions and provide support during your pregnancy and after your precious baby has arrived. All of our mums give birth at Rotunda with a plan for an early discharge home provided that mum and baby are well. The community midwife will organise your plan for going home morning after your baby is born. And this is usually 12 to 24 hours after a vaginal delivery or on day three following a cesarean section birth. Our team of midwives will then visit you at home to help with all aspects of caring for you and your new baby, usually up to a week after the birth. This includes the practical help of learning how to bath your baby, feeding and settling techniques. We also check baby's weight and teach parents about the signs of thriving and all the skills of breastfeeding. While all midwives are experts in breastfeeding, many of our midwives are lactation consultants, as well as midwife prescribers. So this enables us to prescribe medication if necessary with no delay. The midwives will also assess how you are doing, ensuring your physical recovery from birth and helping with the emotional journey. So much of our care is about education and helping you become the best parent you can be. We have access to all the resources the hospital has to offer, including obstetricians, physiotherapy, dietitian, mental health support team, and social workers. And our breastfeeding support service extends into the days and weeks after you have had your baby to continue ongoing support. Approximately one third of all Rotunda clients come through our care. We're proud of the work we do and the care we provide. If you think you'd might like to book with us, please call our office on 01-817-6849 or to speak to a midwife, call on 087-290-5280 or ask the midwife and the outpatients to refer you to us. We really look forward to meeting you.
Hello, my name is Sarah. I'm a community midwife here in the Rotonda Hospital. Next birth after caesarean NBAC is a midwife-led clinic. This service is for women who have had one previous caesarean birth and who have an uncomplicated and low-risk pregnancy. The midwife at your booking appointment will refer you to this service if you are suitable. At your NBAC appointment, you'll be provided with information regarding your options for birth for this pregnancy. Your MBAC appointment can happen face-to-face -face in the Rotunda Outpatients Department or by a telephone call. Your options for birth include VBAC vaginal birth after caesarean or elective caesarean section. You can attend the community midwives clinics or the midwives in the Outpatients Department in the Rotunda for your antenatal care. If you attend the community midwives clinics, you will receive postnatal visits in your home from the midwives. This option is for women living in North County Dublin and the Ashburn area. Hi, I'm Adele, one of the midwives in adult outpatients. I'm going to walk you through what to expect at your first booking visit. When you come into the hospital, follow the signs for outpatients and walk straight through the outpatients department and up to reception at the top where you will check in. Here, one of our friendly admin staff will check all of your details and give you a yellow sheet of paper. You then come back down to the midwife station where one of the midwives will greet you. We will then bring you for your ultrasound scan. The purpose of the scan is to confirm your pregnancy. It's also to see how many babies you are having and estimate your due date. After your scan, we will need a urine sample. The midwife will advise you if one or two samples are required. You will then return to the midwife station with your urine sample and your yellow sheet. We will then check your height, weight and blood pressure.
it is really important that we record a full and detailed medical, surgical and family history. Sometimes this is done prior to your appointment on the phone. However, if this hasn't been possible, we will do it together on the day. Blood tests will then be offered. There is no need to fast for this appointment and you are welcome to bring someone along with you. If it's required, you will meet a doctor on the day. You and the midwife will make a plan of care for the rest of your pregnancy and they will answer any question or queries you may have. We will contact you if there is any issues with any of the tests performed that day. Before you leave, the admin staff will give you your appointments. Please also allow plenty of time for this appointment. We look forward to meeting you and looking after you during your pregnancy. Hi, my name is Gronia and I'm part of the Women's Health Physiotherapy team here in the Rotunda Hospital. First of all, congratulations on your pregnancy. We wish you as healthy and as active a pregnancy journey as possible. So, why is physiotherapy part of the maternity service? Well, our knowledge of muscles and how the body moves is our speciality. We are here to help you with any physical issues you may have during your pregnancy and beyond. The guidelines for exercise during pregnancy are 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise on most days of the week. Have a think, are you achieving that? Remember, movement is medicine for your joints. In particular, during pregnancy, we focus on pelvic health. That is anything to do with the pelvic floor muscles, the pelvic joints, and the lower back muscles. While it is common to experience a few aches and pains during pregnancy, we don't want you experiencing any pain that stops you sleeping at night or carrying out your everyday activities. The physiotherapy service here covers antenatal education classes and I would re recommend as many of you as possible to attend these free classes. They are a really super resource. The classes cover how to do the pelvic floor exercises and how to keep healthy during your pregnancy. We teach you how to prepare for labour by practicing different breathing positions and different positions for labour itself. We also give you some advice about minding yourself and your baby after delivery. We offer both one-to-one -one and group Zoom classes to help you manage any pregnancy-related pain and pelvic floor issues. During your hospital stay, we aim to see the majority of mums who have delivered their babies during the week, giving you the expert, evidence-based, practical advice that will help you recover. This advice includes reminding you to do your pelvic floor exercises, gentle tummy and back exercises, and tips to recover if you've had a c-section. In the postnatal period we can also follow up on any of the physical issues that, that have happened in pregnancy in our specialised outpatient clinic. Some of these issues are about your bladder and bowel health, rehabilitating the muscles supporting your pelvis and sexual function. If you feel that at six weeks postnatal you're struggling with any of these pelvic floor issues it might be that you just have to continue doing the exercises however there's always help available if you need it. 
You can self-refer into our service for pelvic floor related issues until your six months postnatal. We also offer a postnatal class, which you can attend within two months of having your baby. We give general advice regarding function, core, pelvic health, and we get you started with Pilates-based postnatal exercises. Finally, as I said at the beginning, we wish you a healthy and active pregnancy and invite you to check out the videos and advice on the physiotherapy page of our website.
Hello, my name is Adele. I am the Stop Smoking Support Midwife. Giving up smoking during pregnancy is one of the best things you can do for both you and your baby. It has shown that for every extra support you use, you are doubling, if not tripling, your chances of staying quit. Here at the Rotunda, we are offering both behavioural support and nicotine replacement therapy. The process is simple. Your midwife will ask you about your smoking during your first visit. You will then be referred on to me. Our approach is a non-judgmental support service. You will first do an assessment appointment and we will have a chat and discuss your smoking habits and tailor a support service for you. During this assessment, we will set a quit date. This is a date set by you at your pace. We will then work together towards that date and I will give you support all the way. Using both behavioural and nicotine replacement therapy, you are increasing your chances of success. Also, we have now introduced carbon monoxide testing. Carbon monoxide is the poisonous gas that is in cigarettes. Carbon monoxide also limits the amount of oxygen for you and your baby. This test is a simple breath test, which will show you a result instantly. It will show you the level of carbon monoxide that both you and your baby have in your system. Checking this level can sometimes be an eye opener for many women. This test is offered to every woman at their first visit as carbon monoxide can also be caused by environmental situations or secondhand smoke. During your quit attempt, you will see the levels of carbon monoxide drop very quickly for you and your baby, and this can be great motivation. Once you have set your quit date and decided on your chosen nicotine replacement therapy, the journey begins. Take the first step towards a healthier you by contacting the Stop Smoking Support Service today. With our support here at the Rotunda, I will guide you through. The support is available to you throughout your entire pregnancy. Just ask at your next visit or email me at stopsmoking at rotunda.ie. Gestational diabetes is one of the most common health problems that can happen during pregnancy. It affects as many as 12% of pregnancies in Ireland and can lead to serious problems for both mum and baby. Certain women are at higher risk of developing gestational diabetes. For example, if you are overweight, if you have a family member with diabetes, if you had gestational diabetes in a previous pregnancy, or depending on your ethnic background. If you are at risk, you will receive a blood test for gestational diabetes between 24 and 28 weeks of pregnancy. If you are diagnosed, there are day-to-day -day changes you can make to stay healthy. How much exercise you get and what kind of food you eat can have important effects on your health and your baby's health. But what happens when you have gestational diabetes and how can diet and exercise help? Food and drinks are broken down in your digestive system. The sugar they contain is absorbed into your bloodstream. But sugar needs insulin to work. Insulin is made by the pancreas and helps sugar get into your cells. Insulin acts like a key that lets the sugar move from the bloodstream into the cells of your body where it is used for energy. Pregnancy hormones change the way insulin works in your body. In the later stages of pregnancy, these changes make it difficult for insulin to unlock the cells and allow the sugar to enter. This is what is known as 
insulin resistance. Some insulin resistance is normal in pregnancy, but this means that your pancreas needs to work extra hard to keep blood sugar levels in a healthy range. When you have gestational diabetes, your pancreas is not able to keep up. As a result, too much sugar is left in the blood. However, a carefully planned diet with high fibre carbohydrates and no added sugar can make it easier for your body to manage the sugar in your blood. Exercise will also help keep blood sugar low as it improves insulin's ability to unlock the cells and uses up sugar for energy. If blood sugar is controlled, your chances of a healthy pregnancy are the same as a non-diabetic mum. This makes diet and exercise powerful tools for a healthy pregnancy. However, if blood sugar is not well controlled, this can lead to problems in both mum and baby. In a study of 23,000 pregnant women around the world, researchers found a link between high blood sugar in mum and babies that had grown too big. Researchers also found a link between high blood sugar and preeclampsia, premature delivery, need for caesarean section, birth injury and abnormal sugar control in baby. Diabetes during pregnancy can also put you and your baby at risk for problems later in life, including type 2 diabetes and heart disease. But there are actions you can take. Changes in diet and exercise, combined with close monitoring, can successfully manage blood sugar in 7 out of 10 pregnancies. So no better time to start than now. To learn more about Irish research on maternal and newborn health, you can visit the HRB Mother and Baby Clinical Trial Network's website. Hi, my name is Irene and I'm one of the sonographers here in the Rotunda. In the Rotunda you will be offered two formal scans, one at the booking visit and one at 20 to 22 weeks, known as the anatomy scan. For many of you, the booking scan is the first time you will see your baby. The purpose of this scan is to measure your baby, to give you a due date and see your baby's heartbeat. If your baby is more than 11 weeks, we will check the baby's brain and the arms and the legs. It is not a gender scan. Please have a full bladder for the scan if you are less than 15 weeks. This allows us a clearer picture of your baby. We will be asking you for the first day of your last period and if, you're, if your pregnancy is IVF, we will ask you for your embryo transfer date. The anatomy scan will be performed between 20 and 22 weeks. The purpose of this scan is to check the baby's anatomy, including the heart, brain, spine, kidneys and limbs. If the baby is in the correct position, you may be able to find out the gender. If the baby is not in a good position to assess all of the anatomy, you may be asked to return to complete the scan. If the sonographer has any concerns at the time of the scan, they may request a second opinion from a colleague or you may be referred to fetal medicine where you will be seen by a doctor who specialises in ultrasound. Photographs are given at these scans, so please no recording or taking photographs during the scan. You are allowed one person accompany you for the scan and children are not allowed at any time. We look forward to seeing you for your ultrasound.
While pregnancy and early parenthood are very exciting times for many, they can also be a real challenge uh, for a lot of people, and this can negatively impact people's mental health. Some of these difficulties can be short-lived, but for many they persist and they impact uh, their people's quality of life. Here at the Rotunda Hospital, we have a specialist perinatal mental health service. This team supports women and individuals who are struggling with their mental health, and we have a wide range of clinicians working within our team. These include mental health nurses, mental health midwives, we have a social worker, an occupational therapist, a psychologist, and, and psychiatrists. Together, we provide a wide range of services. We, we carry out assessments, we develop care plans, we, we provide a lot of psychoeducation, and we provide therapeutic supports on a one-to-one -one basis, but also through groups. Um, and we prescribe and advise about the use of uh, medication um, during and after pregnancy. We see people that are currently unwell, but we're also happy to, to work with people who have a history of mental health problems to develop prevention strategies. Um, our service provides care to individuals with many different conditions. So these include depression, anxiety, OCD, psychosis, bipolar affective disorder, personality-based difficulties, trauma-based symptoms, and, and eating disorders, uh, among, other, among other conditions. Our service provides support to women and individuals at any time from their booking visit up until one year after delivery. If you're already attending a mental health service, we are happy to work in collaboration with them. If you feel you would benefit from input from our service, please request a referral from your midwife, obstetrician, or GP. Should you simply want to find out more information about the services that are there, there's information available on the Rotunda website.
Hi, I'm Sue Hogan and today I'm going to chat about signs of labour and when to come on into hospital. So it's important to know that there's no set path that your labour will take. For some women, their waters might break before their contractions begin. For others, it might be contractions first and then the waters may break. So let me try to explain each scenario as simply as possible. So first up, let's talk about waters breaking. So this might be a really obvious gush of fluid, or it may be a more subtle trickle. But the main thing to remember here is that if your waters break, you should always come into hospital, regardless of what is happening with those contractions. When you come in, we'll review both you and your baby. We will check your vital signs, so your blood pressure, your temperature, your heart rate, and your respiration rate. And we may also perform a vaginal or a speculum examination with your consent. We will then review your baby's position. We do this by feeling your abdomen, and we will also check your baby's heart rate. Once all of these checks are complete, together with you, we will make a plan around what will happen next. In some cases, it may be more appropriate for you to stay in the hospital for observation, or if all is well with you and your baby, you might prefer to go home for a few hours. The other way things may unfold is that you might experience contractions first. And these contractions will generally start off feeling mild and irregular and will begin to feel stronger and longer and more regular over the course of the day or days. It is time to come into hospital once these contractions are coming every five minutes and each contraction is lasting one minute consistently for one hour. While you're at home in early labour, it is important that you stay calm and relaxed. Rest when you can, eat light snacks and stay hydrated. There are lots of tools you can use to keep comfortable while at home in early labour, such as a nice warm bath with just plain water at a temperature of about 37 degrees. Or a TENS machine is another really great option. Deep breathing during each contraction can also really help to distract you and reduce the feeling of discomfort. Another option would be paracetamol, so one gram every four to six hours, but not more than four grams in 24 hours. If you have any concerns around your baby's movements, vaginal bleeding, or indeed if you are in preterm labor, please attend the hospital straight away. Hope this information was useful and we look forward to meeting you. Hi, I'm Vicky, one of the midwives working on the prenatal ward. I'm going to talk about induction of labour. Induction of labour is the process of starting your labour. There are many reasons why you may require induction, such as your pregnancy is 7 to 10 days over your due date, your waters could have broken, but labour has not started naturally after 24 hours. You have a medical condition such as high blood pressure, diabetes, or you have a medical condition from before pregnancy. You'll be given a date and time to come in to the hospital. There is also an option to allow your return home if deemed suitable. On the day of your induction, you can bring music and headphones in, light snacks, a water bottle, birthing balls or a TENS machine. We suggest you only bring your labour bag to the prenatal ward as induction can take up to two or three days and space is limited. Your midwife will start by doing some initial checks to make sure that you and your baby are ready. This will include a 30 minute monitoring of your baby's heartbeat. There are many different methods of induction. These include a prostaglandin pessary, a prostaglandin gel, breaking your waters and oxytocin. The obstetrician will discuss these methods with you and will recommend the best method for you at your antenatal clinic appointment. When your contractions start, there are many different forms of pain relief available. 
These include walking, using your birthing ball and TENS machine, water, water therapy and medication like gas and air and pethidine injections. Epidurals are available in delivery suite when you are in labour. We always try our best to include your birthing preferences, so please talk to your midwife or doctor in the clinic before your induction. We look forward to meeting you.